The readings for today are number 987 in the hymnal. And now, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us pray for Andrei Mazaruski, requested by wife Lucy, the living and deceased members of the Christ the King Parish and Prayer Group, Maria Dombeck, requested by the Gabowski family, Sarah Sama, requested by family, Olga Bronhard, requested by uh, M Mr. and Mrs. Pasquale Barone, Ruben Medina, requested by friend for the people of the parish. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please welcome our Bishop James Cecchio, who uh, is uh, with us today. Uh, Bishop James, we are very happy to have you in our parish. Uh, it, uh, and always uh, we are looking forward uh, to the Eucharistic celebration and to the breaking of the Word of God uh, and share it with us. May God continue to bless you uh, and uh, to continue to bless our diocese and parish. Thank you. Thanks, Father. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. It's certainly my pleasure and privilege and honor to be here. I'm grateful for the kind invitation uh, to come. It's always a joy to be here in Manville and to gather around the altar of the Lord to be nourished by our God's body and blood. So I'm grateful for you being here and I'm grateful to be here myself. Huh? So God bless you. Let us begin as usual by pausing and calling to mind our sins, asking the Lord to pardon our offenses against him and one another so that we may worthily celebrate this Eucharist. Lord Jesus, your Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. We pray. 
us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princes said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in the city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedadiah answered, he is in your power, for the king could do nothing with him. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern of Prince Malchiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. Ebedmelech, a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault in all they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no food in the city. Then the king ordered Ebedmelech, the Cushite, to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Thanks be to God. destruction out of the mud of the swamp he set my feet upon a crag he made firm my steps and he put a new song into my mouth a hymn to our God many shall look on in awe and trust in the Lord Afflicted and poor, yet the Lord thinks of me. You are my help and my deliverer. O oh my God, hold not back. Lord, come to my reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame. It has taken his seat at the right of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary 
and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire and how I wish it were already blazing. There's a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think I've come to establish peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son, and a son will be divided against his father. A mother will be divided against her daughter, and a daughter against her mother. A mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. St. Paul gives us a beautiful image today in our second reading in the letter to the Hebrews, as he so often does. The image he uses this week is a runner in a race. He compares the Christian life to a race. The goal, of course, is no less than our salvation. St. Paul admonished us, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of our faith. Of course, there are lots of races that we regularly hear about, especially in these days. I think we're all pretty sick of the ads for the race for governor and senator in Pennsylvania. We're not even going to vote in the election, and we hear about it so often, huh? But there's other races, too, uh, that we participate in, personal ones. You know, the race to finish a degree, the race to celebrate an anniversary or to pay off a loan for a car or a house before the interest rates go up too high. And, of course, it's an exciting time now as uh, for, for many of us as the NFL gets underway, huh? Training camps have started again and the preseason has opened up. And as they say, hope springs eternal, huh? The race for the Super Bowl. When I was a young priest, I grew up in South Jersey and uh, I was the team chaplain for that team that plays across the Delaware River uh, down from South Jersey. And so we had a, a, it was fun time of year, this time of year, I always enjoyed it as training camps started going up to Lehigh University. Uh, where they had their training camp and it was always fun to reconnect with the players and the coaches 
And they were such disciplined people, huh? They were such disciplined people. Of course, they had good motivation. But they were such disciplined people staying in shape during the off season. When they come back, uh, they'd, they'd be in such good shape still as the preseason began, as the ca training camp began. And I'd venture to say that those men and athletes like them know their weaknesses and with discipline, they control them, huh? And they overcome them, especially during their, their downtime, their time off. It certainly required a disciplined approach by them to be ready to play. To attain their victories, they overcome the desire also for instant results. And they have to practice patience, of course. It's often, their training is often tedious, uh, no doubt. The training season can be a good reminder for us of what happens when people develop their talents and use discipline in their training. And so likewise, today, St. Paul is telling us, my brothers and sisters of Christ, it should be the same for us, huh? It should be the same for us in the Christian race, the race for our salvation. And St. Paul gives us three good pieces of advice for us to follow for our training for this race, the Christian race. St. Paul advises us, firstly, keep our eyes on Jesus, huh? Keep our eyes on Jesus. We need to be steadfast as we head to the finish line. God never fails us, we know. Keeping our eyes on Jesus means making decisions in our life based on what Jesus would want us to do, huh? Rather than our own desires. We make our decisions based on what we know of Jesus, especially from the Gospels, but also from the 2,000 years of living the Christian faith that the church has experienced and grown its teachings out of. Things that will help us keep focused on Jesus and help us reach the finish line. So keeping our eyes on Jesus helps us to be victorious too. Huh? Secondly, he tells us we should rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race before us. Everything that doesn't bring us help in living a Christian life, St. Paul says, we should let go of, huh? We should let go of, leave it behind. As runners, everything that affects our running so as to win, anything that affects us negatively has to be let go of. Anything that hinders us, athletes get rid of it, huh? And we're urged to do the same. Whatever in our lives might offend God, we have to get rid of. Sinful habits, especially the things that slow us down or make us sluggish. Even venial sins, huh? That's why we, we go to confession, huh? To remind ourselves of those things uh, that are hindering us and to help us get rid of them. So even little things that hinder us, St. Paul urges us, let go of them. Thirdly, finally, Jesus says that we'll never be alone in our training. Jesus doesn't leave us to run the race by ourselves. He's given us the Holy Spirit who dwells within each one of us through our baptism. And he gives us the church established by Jesus himself, which is the ordinary means for us to be victorious, to attain salvation. He gives us the beautiful sacraments, huh? especially the sacrament of the Eucharist. And as I mentioned, the sacrament of penance. Say, St. Paul says, be urged on by the great cloud of witnesses. He's referring to the church, huh? To the saints. Be urged on by the great cloud of witnesses who can help us. So yes, St. Paul tells us today to run the good race, fight the good fight. We know tomorrow is August 15th. It's the assumption of our blessed Virgin Mary. What we celebrate indeed is her victory, huh? her victory and hopefully what will be ours too, her assumption into heaven, holy. You know, God taking her to be completely with himself. Mary's life certainly wasn't easy, uh, but she trained well through her difficulties and challenges. And by her continual yes to God, by her continual yes to God, her openness to his will, she attains victory and won the race. So closely did she unite herself with God's will that he takes her body and soul into heaven with him. This is exactly what God wants to do with each one of us, huh? Take us wholly into heaven. That's his plan. 
from the beginning of time when he created us, that each one of us would be with him forever. So Mary sets the example for us. Huh? Mary sets the example for us, and we so often turn to her for that reason and implore her help as we continue on this Christian race. We ask her assistance. So the assumption is a good day, remembering her victory and spurring us on uh, to victory too. So let us run the good race, brothers and sisters. Let us always ask our Mother Mary to help us in that race so that we too will fight the good fight, nourished by these beautiful gifts that God gives us, especially this wonderful gift of the Eucharist and the sacrament of penance. I'm certainly grateful for you for persevering in the faith, you know, just your being here today and your striving to live the faith, to live, uh, to write, run the good race uh, is certainly an inspiration to me and many others here at Manville. And so I'm grateful to you for your good perseverance in the faith and certainly want you to know my love and my prayers and my gratitude for you. I think your parish so wonderfully exemplified this uh, during the terrible hurricane and the great devastation that came here. So many people hurt and the response of your parish was certainly was certainly great in assisting those in need. I know right away uh, went into action, huh? Your love turned into action to assist those in need. So thanks for your perseverance in the faith and for your good works, huh? Certainly an inspiration. God bless you. Keep up the good race, huh? I'm glad we're on this race together. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers to our God who is full of compassion for our needs and the needs of others in our world. And our response will be, Lord, transform our hearts. Lord, transform our hearts. That all members of the church become inflamed with the power of the gospel, we pray. Lord, Lord transform, transform our hearts. hearts. For those who are suffering from the flooding in Kentucky and fires in California, that Mary, whose assumption into heaven will, we will celebrate tomorrow, intercedes with her son to bring these people relief and hope. We pray, Lord, Lord transform, transform our hearts. For families that are divided, that Christ blesses them with healing and reconciliation, we pray, Lord, Lord transform our hearts. For those who struggle with depression and other mental illness, that God may free them from their pain, we pray. Lord, transform, transform our their hearts. hearts. For young people, especially young males, that they reduce the amount of time they spend on social media and spend more time forming true friendships, we pray. Lord, Lord transform, transform our hearts. 
for ourselves when we would rather brood over what annoys us than turn ourselves over to Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord transform, transform our hearts. For the recovery of Deacon Bill Stephanie, who has undergone quadruple bypass surgery for his heart, we pray. Lord, Lord transform, transform our hearts. And for the faithful departed, especially Emilio, Emilio Scarpa, our parishioner who died recently, and for Andre Mazureski, the living and deceased members of Christ the King Prayer and Praise Group, Maria Dombeck, Sarah Sama, Olga Bonhart, and Ruben de Medina, and deceased members of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, that they are praising God with the angels, we pray. Lord, Lord transform, transform our hearts. Father, you raised Jeremiah from the cistern and your son Jesus from the dead. Graciously raise our spirits by granting these prayer prayers according to your holy will through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn will be number 680, Amazing Grace. 680.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise, the praise of the Lord is for our good and the of all souls. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory without end as we acclaim. Glory to God. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Given thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of that peace. him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not Lord, worthy that you should enter the Lord. But always but say, the word. say the word, and my soul shall be Communion hymn will be number 808, Shepherd of Souls. Shepherd. 
Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be co-heirs in heaven who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So again, good to be with you, huh? Thank you for being here and thanks for uh, the kind invitation again. I'm grateful to Father Slabby for all he does uh, in leading this community, especially during these challenging times that we've had. So uh, to you and to all the leadership here, your deacon and staff, and i um, certainly grateful and I uh, want to thank you for what you do. Uh, so God bless you. Huh? I also want to thank you, uh, in addition to your response to the hurricane, your response to the bishop's appeal. We're certainly grateful for your generosity to the appeal that the diocese made its goal, and it's gratefully we did, um, just as there was a great increase in needs here, so throughout the diocese. I was speaking to our, uh, the person who runs our food shelter in New Brunswick, and uh, 
it's a soup kitchen and a food shelter. And uh, they were telling me that between the beginning of the pandemic, so two and a half years ago till now, uh, given the pandemic and Ida and now the inflation issues, uh, the requests for assistance have tripled. So three times more people are coming for help uh, over these past two years. So thanks to your generosity, we're able to respond and to give help as a diocese to these people uh, so in need. So I certainly want to thank you for your generosity to the, to the Bishop's Appeal. Uh, also, it pays for our seminarians. One of our seminarians is with us today. Uh, we have 23 seminarians. Uh, David's actually Polish, so he fits in well here, huh? <laughs> Should I have given him give the homily, but he's not ordained yet. But uh, we're grateful for uh, your generosity in supporting the seminarians to the Bishop's Appeal, too. And I ask you to please continue to pray for vocations to the priesthood and religious life. Uh, 23 is wonderful. That's the most we've had in 25 years as a diocese. Uh, but we need more, huh, to have enough shepherds for all of our parishes. And we certainly need to witness a consecrated life in our diocese, too. So I ask you to please remember those intentions in your prayers. And if you know someone who would make a good priest or religious, ask them. You know, the number one reason people give for not responding is they were never asked. Uh, so you could be the instrument of the Holy Spirit in asking someone to open their hearts to, uh, to a call from God uh, that they need encouragement to receive, huh? So God bless you again. Uh, my gratitude, my love, and my prayers. And I look forward to seeing you sometime soon, huh? Either in here at Manville or somewhere else throughout our beautiful diocese. But God bless you and have a beautiful Sunday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hymn number 498, Your Holy Queen.